All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello. This is chapter 15 uh, in the Statistics Modeling and World Curriculum. We are looking at probability, okay? So in the last chapter, um, we talked about the addition rule and the multiplication rule. And in this chapter, we're going to make some uh, modifications to those rules uh, because we were assuming things like things being dis uh, events being disjoint or events being independent. So, uh, but what happens when they are uh, when they are not disjoint events, meaning there is an overlap. So we had this formula for when they are disjoint events. We simply add the probabilities together. However, there are lots of things uh, that uh, will not necessarily be disjoint. For example, uh, you can like apples and be a freshman at the same time. So if you were saying, what's the probability of being a freshman and liking apples? Well, we then have a problem. Uh, or like or excuse me uh, or liking apples we have a problem because you can do both of those things and uh, it becomes a problem because there is a where's my picture there it is uh, there is an overlap so if I were to simply add these two probabilities together if I were to add probability of B and I were to add probability of a this overlapped area the P of a and B area gets counted twice so this area that is, uh, is overlapping gets counted multiple times when we simply add this circle plus this circle. Uh, again, adding B adds the whole circle. Adding A holds, adds the whole circle. This area that got overlapped gets added twice. So we have uh, this sort of modification to the general addition rule in that if the events A and B are not disjoint we add the probabilities together but we subtract this area because we have added it twice so we're subtracting it once so that it only gets added once okay uh, so let's do uh, an example of that um, again back in chapter one of the book the author suggested that you sample some pages of the book at random to see whether they held a graph or an or other data display so for example, let's say we did that and we got the following distribution, okay? 48% of pages had some kind of data display, 27% of pages had an equation, and 7% of pages had both uh, an equation and a data display. So, and then everything else just had nothing. So uh, we wanna create a Venn diagram that represents these results. So uh, here's my sample space. Uh, we've got probability of having some kind of data display here, which is 48%. And then we've got the probability of having an equation here, and that was 27%. And this area in between that had both data display and an equation is 7%. So we've got a nice Venn diagram here that represents this situation. Um, labeled with the appropriate percentages inside. So let's use that Venn diagram to answer some other questions. Uh, what is the probability that a page had a data display or an equation? All right, so we need uh, data display or equation. That's P of data display uh, or equation. So again, looking at this up here, we've got 48% uh, here, 27% here, and then in there we've got that 7% that's been overlapped. So the probability of it having a data display is 48%, so 0.48. The probability of having an equation is 0.27. But again, the, the issue here is that part of that 48% is the overlap and part of this 27% is the overlap. So I have now added the overlap twice, which means I need to, to, to subtract the overlap to find the true P of data display or equation. So we add the two things together and we subtract 0 0.07 and we end up with 0.68. So there's a 68% chance that it had a data display or an equation. Because again, we're looking at this area in between here, but adding them together adds this part twice. So we subtract it, so it only gets added once. All right. 
Um, okay, what is the probability that a page has neither a data display nor an equation? So from my Venn diagram here, if, uh, oops, we should have an overlap there. There we go. Um, that was 0.48, that was 0.27, that's 7. We're looking for the area that is neither data display nor equation. That means we're looking for this space out here. This is P of data display uh, complement or uh, equation complement. And I know the space of this in here, right? We actually just calculated that. We know that that space is 68%. That's what we found this in here to be, which means we can calculate this one by doing 1 minus 0.68. So 1 minus 0.68 gives us 0.32 as our solution. So everything out here having, no, having nothing, uh, that's 32% chance. So 32% had uh, no data displays and or, or no equations. Uh, let's do the next one. So what is the probability that a page had a data display but no equation. So let's draw my Venn diagram. Data display had 0 0.48, 0 0.27, uh, 0 0.07. So we're looking for the probability that it uh, had a data display, um, but no equation. So data display or equation complement. Uh, up on my graph, that looks like it's this section up here. This area that doesn't include the 0 0.07 uh, from both, because it had to have a data display but not an equation. So you can see from our picture here that uh, this whole thing is 0.48, but the 0 0.07 needs to not be included. So 0.48 minus 0 0.07 equals 0.41. So notice that drawing the picture of the Venn diagram and doing the notation really help us figure out the area that we need to talk about in order to solve it. That first one uh, helped us do the or, that first or equation. But then after that, we are able to really use what we know about the picture in order to answer a lot of these questions. Uh, so that's the general addition rule, right? That is... Uh, when we have things that may not be disjoint, okay? Let's take another look um, at the general multiplication rule. The general multiplication rule talked about having an independent uh, probabilities, two independent events when we multiplied them. That, however, is not always the case. Sometimes we will have probabilities that are dependent. Uh, when that happens, we have what's called a conditional distribution. Uh, a conditional distribution is where uh, s one probability is dependent on another probability. So we have this notation to state that. Uh, this notation means the probability of B given, right? That little line means given A. A and what that's saying is we know that A has happened. Knowing that A has happened, what's the probability of B? Because A happening is going to change the probability of B. So the conditional probability of B given A may be different than just the probability of B. So we have a formula that helps us to uh, calculate this. The probability of B given A equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And this other formula, uh, by the way, also works. The probability of A given B is the probability of A and B over P of B. Notice that it's the given that is the thing that we are dividing by in this formula. Um, so, again, this restricts the attention to just things that have happened in A to find the probability of B happening. 
So let's look at a couple of examples of this. So here we have a table showing the results of a poll asking adults whether they were looking forward to the Super Bowl game, uh, commercials, or if they didn't plan to watch it. Okay, so there's three possibilities here. They either wanted to see the game happen, they were waiting for commercials, or they're not planning on watching it, uh, and it's split up between males and females. All right, so let's answer some questions here, uh, it trying to make sure that we use appropriate notation each time. So, what is the probability of an adult looking forward to the game? So here we're looking for P of game, right? Uh, an adult means both males and females. Um, so we have P of game. And uh, P of game then is going to be 479, because that's the number of adults that want to watch the game out of the total number of people. So here we have 479 out of 1,008. Um, or if we want to do that as a decimal, uh, that's going to be 0.47. Five. Uh, notice that this was not a conditional probability, right? What is the probability probability of an adult looking forward to the game? There's no condition being set here. What is the probability of an adult planning on not watching the game? Again, there's no condition being set here, right? There's no uh, dependent probability happening. This is just what's the probability that an adult won't watch the game? Well. Uh, there's 292 adults not watching the game out of 1,008. So this is 292, excuse me, out of 1,008. And again, if we want to do that as a uh, decimal, uh, it's going to be 0.289 or 0.28. Actually, 0.29 is probably the best way to round that. So 0.29. Again, these are not these are not conditional probabilities. These are uh, just what's the probability of this event happening. However, uh, let's get into a couple more where we will see some. So, what is the probability of being male and looking forward to the game? Notice uh, we are uh, changing it a little bit here, right? Uh, we're we're giving ourselves two different uh, events, right? We need to be male and look forward to the game. So we're looking at P of game and male. Well, to be male and to look forward to the game means we're, there's 279 of us uh, looking forward to the game. And notice that it's not restricting this to just males or just people that want to uh, talk about the game. So we're not looking at a row condition. We're comparing that still to the 1,008 people uh, that are in this survey. So the probability of being a male and looking forward to the game is out of a thousand uh, is 279 out of 1008. But what is the probability of a male looking forward to the game? Notice the difference in how that question is being asked. It's not saying a male and looking forward to the game. It says what's the probability of a male looking forward to the game? This little phrase right here is setting a condition it's saying we are male. What is the probability of a male? So given that we are male, what's the probability we're looking forward to the game? So P of game given male. What's the probability of looking forward to the game given that we are male? So in this case, um, given that we are male, there's 279 males that are looking forward to the game but now we're not comparing it to the 1,008 here. Given that we are male, we are restricting our attention to just this row of males. There's 279 out of 492 that are looking forward to the game. Notice that we used this formula, P of game given male is the probability of game and male over probability of male, right? The probability of being game and male is 279. The probability of being male is 492. So 279 over 492. Technically, those are both out of 1,008, right? But the 1,008s cancel. Um, so it's 279 over 492. We used the formula here. 
it was just given to us up above. What about this? What is the probability of someone who wants to watch the game being female? What's the condition being set? The probability of someone who wants to watch the game, right? Given that we want to watch the game, what's the probability of being female? P of female given wants to watch the game. So we want to watch the game. That's 270, uh, excuse me, uh, 200 females want to watch the game out of 479 people who want to watch the game. Again, the condition is who wants to watch the game. So we are restricting ourselves to only this row. 200 females out of the 479 want to watch the game. What's the probability that someone who won't watch, who won't watch the game is male? Again, the condition who won't watch the game is male. Probability of male given won't watch. We are restricting ourselves only to the row of people that won't watch the game. Therefore, how many, what's the probability of being male? That's 132 out of 292. Again, P of male given won't watch is P of male and won't watch. That's 132, that's that one right there, over the probability of won't watch which is 292, so it's 132 over 292. So uh, that's where we'll call it uh, for this particular video. In the next video, we're going to talk about independence and the general multiplication rule. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you another time. Bye.